Here we're going to take a look at the differences between chiral centers and stereo centers. These terms are often used interchangeably, but it's not quite accurate because there are some subtle differences. So first, let's refresh our definition of chiral centers. A chiral center is an atom that's attached to four different groups. Okay, now let's take a look at the definition of a stereo center. A stereo center is an atom about which an exchange of two groups produces a stereo isomer. So chiral centers are actually stereo centers, but not all stereo centers are chiral centers. So kind of the way you can think of this If this large area is stereo centers, chiral centers fits in here. So all chiral centers end up being stereo centers, but not all stereo centers are chiral centers. Okay, so let's look at some examples. We'll start with something pretty simple. Now we know from our previous discussions that this carbon is a chiral center. There's four different groups, a methyl, ethyl, hydroxy, and a hydrogen. So we know it's a chiral center. But if you take any two groups and swap them, you can swap any two, but it's going to be easiest here. Let's just swap the H and the OH and draw what we get. Now we have the H on the wedge, the OH on the dash. That's still a chiral center, but these two molecules are stereoisomers. In fact, they're enantiomers. So what we found, you know, keeping in mind the definition of stereocenters, here exchanging these two groups produced a stereoisomer. For that reason, this particular carbon, right here, is both a chiral center and a stereocenter. Okay, now let's look at another example. How about this alkene? Now, at first glance, you may not think much about it, you know, having to do anything with stereochemistry, but let's just look specifically at this carbon, and I'm going to draw the hydrogen in. What happens at that carbon if I swap the hydrogen and the methyl? If we do that, the methyl's down here, the hydrogen's up here. This first alkene we call a transalkene because the two groups are on opposite sides. The second one 
is a cis alkene because the two methyl groups are on the same side of the double bond. Cis and trans alkenes are stereoisomers. In fact, these are diastereomers. So what that tells us is the interchange of two groups here produces a stereoisomer. So this must be a stereocenter. So this is one of those cases that falls somewhere outside here. That double bond certainly isn't a chiral center, but it is a stereocenter. Let's do one final example. And we'll consider this molecule. Now, you should recognize already that this is achiral. because we have a plane of symmetry that runs right through the middle here. But nonetheless, if we look at actually either of these positions, here or here, let's just focus on one for this example. We'll focus on the top where there's the OH. And I'm going to go ahead and draw in the hydrogen. And let's swap. the H and the OH. So we exchange the two groups and draw what we get. That's still not a chiral center because there's a plane of symmetry through the molecule. But these two molecules here are stereoisomers. These are also a pair of diastereomers. So despite having no chiral centers, exchanging the group at that position gave us a stereoisomer, so that is a stereocenter. So there is a subtle but very important difference between chiral centers and stereocenters. We can now expand our 2 to the n rule and say n equals the number of stereocenters. And that gives us the max number of possible stereoisomers. By using the stereocenter term, that opens up the definition to capture the stereocenters and the chiral centers.